Carolina okay. um, uh, Drago and uh, Lane Marshall as the moderators of an EVO session that uh, took place in January and February of this year. And this is a, a new session, a new approach actually, and uh, it's already gotten a lot of traction. And it's great to have it as part of our anniversary, 20th anniversary lineup for uh, the EVO session. So um, without further ado, I will turn it over to Carolina and Lane. Welcome everyone. And as Christine just mentioned, we are reporting out on uh, our SOFLA session, which was a first time EVO session. However, it's a little more complicated than that because it's kind of an offspring of another EVO session that already existed. Um, back in 2015, um, with some colleagues, I began the flipped learning session, which now has been running, I think, just about every year since 2015. And now it's rather established. And so uh, this year we started SOFLA, which you can see says flip learning right in there, synchronous online flip learning approach. So it's kind of an, an offshoot or an offspring. And in fact, we asked people uh, to start with the flip learning if they had never heard of flip learning because uh, in only five, you know, we only have five weeks. And so we started with a little bit about flipped learning, but we basically wanted to assume that people knew at least something about flipped learning when we uh, launched the SOFLA because we wanted to go through the eight steps of SOFLA, which you'll see in a few minutes on a few slides beyond. So um, to introduce ourselves, um, uh, Carolina and I were the lead coordinators uh, in a group of five. So um, I'm Lane Marshall, Helene, but Lane, uh, from Long Island University, Hudson, and I direct the TESOL programs there and bilingual ad. And Carolina, do you want to just introduce yourself real quick? And sure. Um, yeah, I am Carolina Rodriguez Buitrago. I am a professor at Institución Universitaria Colombo Americana. Unica in Bogota, Colombia. And I am also a moderator of a flip learning session. I started that um, thanks to Lane, who actually invited me to uh, become a moderator after I was a participant. Um, then I became part of the coordinating team of EVO. Uh, I finished my cycle there and then I moved on to moderating the SOFLA session. I also teach in a teacher education program. Okay, great. All right, so what is this SOFLA business? So what, uh, what happened was I took my knowledge of flipped learning, I've been flipping since 2011, and my knowledge of online learning, which I've been doing since uh, 2008, putting my courses online, but I never put them together, they were separate. And then suddenly I said, wait a minute, I can flip online, how do I do it? And I just mixed it all up and I came out with a recipe which is SOFLA, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so that's how it happened. And Carolina was right there with me, encouraging me. This was back in 2016 when we first did an official SOFLA class, which was a grammar class. What else, right? <laughs> we did the grammar class. <laughs> okay, so the idea is you take the best practices of both flipping and online. And when you mix them together, what we decided was really, really important was to have a synchronous piece. Because when you teach synchronously, you have all your nonverbal communication, the four skills, everything is happening uh, in class. So this is SOFLA. You can see it's a learning cycle with eight steps. And we're not here to teach you about SOFLA. We're here to report on the EVO session. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but I do want you to see that the pre-work, you might remember from flipping, pre-work is important, is yellow. Because if you don't have the pre-work in place and do it effectively, the rest of the cycle falls apart, right? So, uh, so what we did in this session was, and we'll tell you more about it in detail, but what we did was we went through all eight steps. We took the participants in five weeks through all eight steps. And uh, 
Carolina is going to tell you more about what we did in the EVO session. Okay, so this was the first time session, but because of the contingency for the pandemic, we had uh, a lot of interested people on this model, which promised a lot of uh, structure for them in their online classes. A lot of people were really scared about how to structure their class because they were focusing on the technology. They didn't know really like how to approach a lesson. So that was, I guess, one of the uh, key differentiating factors in our session was that it promised some structure, especially for the synchronous class, which is what people were kind of freaking out about. So we had 150 people registered um, for a first time EVO session. We were pretty satisfied with, the, with that number. Then uh, we had um, 50 active people on Canvas throughout the entire session, which, which is actually very good. Um, we had them active in Canvas for the forums. We gave uh, information inside of Canvas. We shared uh, different resources. We had a space there for them to share their lessons. Um, but we also had two additional platforms that were Perusal and PlayPosit. So um, in Perusal, we had people also registered. And as you can see in the number before, we had 30 people active on Perusal. What we did on Perusal was to discuss readings. So Lane has put together in the course of these four or five years, she has put together some articles and some resources for workshops she's given and um, different articles on flipped learning that she has written and also I have and everything. So we had all these articles within Perusal and we had people discuss them. Uh, we know EVO is not a university credited course, but there were a lot of people who were highly engaged with these materials. And Perusal was a great way to introduce this kind of tool for them. Uh, because as you know, um, in flipped learning, sometimes we need to have these tools for the pre-work so that students can actually engage with the information and not just read plainly the text. And so since we need some analytics, we need some data from students. So we thought, well, well, we would use Perusal, which is a website we have used ourselves in our courses. Um, it's a little bit more academic, but we thought it was great because people got to know it and so they can use it in their own contexts. We also uh, used PlayPosit and on PlayPosit we had some video lessons. Basically, the idea of using PlayPosit was also the same of offering them an example or a sample on how to do this exercise of the pre-work. So we gave them videos, we gave them different information about flip learning in general, flip learning uh, with online learning and so forth. And um, we had participation of 20 participants in the play Posit, constant participation throughout the five weeks. Um, we were realizing the importance of teaching these tools through example, like by using them. And so this was one of the highlights in our session. Another one of the highlights um, that I missed to point in this slide was we had an average of 20 synchronous sessions for our EBO. We would meet on Saturdays and Sundays and Lane is going to tell you more about those meetings. And we also had, as an exemplar of students' work, we had 15 completed self lessons. So out of the 50 active participants on Canvas, 15 of them completed their SOFLA lesson. So as we did our session um, step by step, the eight steps of the SOFLA model, um, we walked our participants through how to create each one of these steps and they would do it as the week progressed. And so by the end, 15 people had completed their SOFLA lessons and we're still keeping in touch with them um, because we're still giving them feedback on the tools, the lessons, the decisions they are making. So I'll um, move this for Lane to tell us, um, oh no, <laughs> sorry, before that, I'm going to tell you about our moderating team. We were five moderators, uh, three season moderators for EVO. We were Lane, as she told you, she was uh, the person who started the flipped learning uh, session with a group of colleagues. Then me, I have been a moderator for uh, the flipped learning session since 2016. And then Heike Philip, you know, uh, she's been around with immersive technology, with storytelling, with um, all this um, 
like virtual worlds for a long time. And so we were the three seasoned moderators and we had two new moderators and new people to EVO. They are Heather Rubin, an educator in New York, and Kazuko Saito. She is a student of Lane and also a Japanese teacher. She brought a very interesting lesson uh, to us. And Lane can tell you a bit more about them too, maybe uh, when she talks about the lessons that we, uh, we had. So there you go. <laughs> okay. So uh, we, we had four types of synchronous sessions. And I just want to say that the synergy of the five of us, the moderators, we all had different points of view. And the meetings we had, I'm going to use a nice word, where they were animated. <laughs> because it was difficult to come up with what we really wanted to accomplish in the synchronous sessions. And everyone had different ideas. And so we decided, hey, let's do a little bit of everything. So we ended up doing a little bit of everything. And it turned out to actually, I think, work very well. So one of the things we did was we had guest speakers. Uh, we brought in someone who's actually using SOFLA in her classroom, Ilka Koska at Northeastern University. And she and I wrote an article about SOFLA, not about her class, that, that one's coming up, but we wrote an article about SOFLA that first introduced the cycle itself. Uh, and she came to talk about what it felt like to be a teacher teaching SOFLA. And uh, we recorded all the synchronous sessions too, so people can go back. The second guest we had was someone who is researching SOFLA as his dissertation. And he studied my grammar class in the fall and interviewed my students. And so we also had a student panel and on the student panel were some of my students from the fall. And so this particular session was the student perspective. His research, uh, Jeff Skolnick in, at Deakin College in Australia, his focus is to look at the student perspective on SOFLA. And so we did a whole session with students and the researcher looking from the student point of view. Uh, so then we went to um, having demos. The demos, which were usually on a Saturday, I think, um, were headed by uh, moderators. So the idea of a demo, in fact, I gave one this morning with Heather at TESOL, we did a demo. <laughs> Interesting. Um, we had uh, Heike, do a demo. What we mean by demo is that we use the eight steps of SOFLA as part of what we're doing in the synchronous session, which is teaching them something about SOFLA that they're going to need. So Heiko was teaching them about making a talking head video. But when she did that session, she went through the eight steps. Okay. Uh, then we had Kazuko do a SOFLA Japanese class with us, and she went through the eight steps teaching us Japanese. That was really a blast. And then uh, the next one was Carolina, who did a session on giving instructions. And it turns out more than meets the eye, it's very complicated to give appropriate instructions and not have students come back at you with, what did you say we had to do? And Martha Ramirez has an, an article on that that we all used and learned from as part of what we did in uh, Carolina's session. So those were the demo sessions. All right, then we had a couple other sessions from uh, one from me and one from Heather, where we took, uh, we took the uh, SOFLA approach and we added a little to it. One thing about EVO that's so great is that you come in with one thing, but you come out with something even better. So what happened was uh, in the clarification session, I clarified a step that most people apparently were not totally clear about. And so we talked about what step six really is. We're not going to go into it now. Preview and discovery and also clarified other steps. It was a chance. It was a free form session where people could ask questions about the steps. Then Heather led one where she presented brand new SOFLA rubrics never seen before. First time seen in EVO. She's got rubrics for peers, rubrics for uh, us to evaluate the, the SOFLA classes and a hyperdoc for people to use for planning. She's amazing at that. She's the one who did the demo with me this morning uh, at uh, TESOL. And then, of course, we had the participants do synchronous sessions. So I think we had three of those, didn't we? We had Paul, Teresa, and Tugba, right? We had three teachers present. 
and they presented their brand new Sofla lessons, never had tried it before. And they did it live with all of us there, which took a lot of uh, bravery there. So, okay. And then, um, so those were the synchronous sessions. Uh, what are we doing? We're just gonna show them a screenshot, right? Of the participants. Yeah. So one of the things that um, we were asked to do in reporting to you is showing the products. Uh, do you wanna talk about the participants folder? Carolina, sure. yeah. Yeah, so what we did was we created a shared folder for um, all of our participants, and then we assigned one folder for each one of them. Uh, the people who actually uploaded the entire um, SOFLA lesson onto the Canvas platform. So we took those lessons and we put them in a folder. And so as you can see here inside of this folder, this is Eileen's uh, folder and we have for example, Gulner did her peer review using Heather's rubric. Um, and also each one of the moderators um, did some of the, of the lessons. So people got feedback on their lesson from a fellow participant and from a moderator. This really was uh, an addition um, to our session because people felt more connected with the model. They got to ask questions and to correct uh, things. We have been refining and, and Lane has also been working on the model and refining things and instructions based on the experience gained uh, with the participants for this EBO session. We have to say that we had all many different topics, not only English, um, like English language teaching, but we also, for example, in this case, uh, she's an expert like in academic writing. So she used um, APA. We had one of our participants from Argentina who shared a lesson uh, for the military where he works. Uh, we also had another teacher from England, a teacher from Germany, from Colombia, and they were all very, um, let's say the sharing was friendly, was collaborative, and not only from the moderators, for, but between the participants themselves as well. So that was a, a good lesson that we learned. Uh, we would definitely would do the same exercise if we did it next year. Okay. And so, yeah, we have created a Facebook group. So just in case you want to know more about Sofla, because this is going to keep growing, keep improving and keep changing. So definitely stay tuned uh, with our Facebook group because that's where the information is going to be posted throughout the year. And well, this is our contact information, Lane. I just want to thank EVO for believing in us and letting us try something that's just right out of the gate, brand new. We had never done a session where we had five weeks to work on, on SOFLA. So we created it as we were going and you know we proposed it in the fall, but we added so much as we went along and now it's there. So we've created it and it wouldn't have been there if it weren't for EVO. And the only other thing I wanna mention is when you think about 15 people and you say, oh, they had 150 registered, but only 15 really completed it and did a lesson. These are not regular lesson plans. You're not looking at them, but they're very complicated plans because remember there's eight steps and they really needed to internalize it. So we were very happy getting a, a group of 15 teachers who completed it. We also had a lot of teachers who did some of the steps. We're talking about a complete lesson when we say 15. Just wanted to throw that in there. And if anyone wants to try and contact us and learn more about SOFLA, we're happy to talk to you. That's it. And now we are open for Q&A. That's great. That is absolutely great. Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, SOFLA sounds like a pudding. It sounds delicious. <laughs> it <Souffle>. definitely was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if someone wants to join, um, let's say before Evo, is there any way that they can get uh, more information and maybe try a course using SOFLA? Is that possible? Well, we have perusal, uh, mm -hmm. which is still open mm -hmm. and there's a code and we're happy to share oh. that code. Uh, people can go into perusal and we're there asynchronously and they can learn on their own as they go through and they can interact with other people. So it is possible to learn on your own with, say, help, the help of... Uh, yeah, 
in perusal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. What, what do you plan to share on the Facebook page you mentioned? Well, we talked to uh, our participants wanted to share lessons because uh -huh. they were really excited, but because these are eight steps, it takes time to really internalize them and really sync them in with your students, really synchronize them with your teaching style. So we thought, well, we just leave this Facebook group open. So whenever you have a lesson and you want to share it with the, with the team, you can get feedback. And so that's the idea to share lessons and resources. Lane has been putting together videos and clarifying information for the different steps. Um, I have been working uh, in Colombia in my institution with SOFLA, so we'll very soon have the Spanish version of it. And um, Kazuko is working on the Japanese version of it. So yeah, this is going to go places. <laughs> Brilliant. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also, uh, you've opened a patent, in other words, um, Nobody can use the word. It's yours, Lane. Is that oh, it? SOFLA. Yeah, yes. SOFLA. The acronym is a registered trademark. <laughs> okay. Isn't that a lot of money? Or it wasn't? It's worth it. I, you know, I want really? my intellectual property to be respected. No, that's great. I think it's great. I just heard that it's hundreds of thousands, of, like $100,000 or no, something. No, 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 no. We'll no, talk later. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> no, I'd love like to that. know more. I'm a teacher. <laughs> That's what I was wondering, you know, why would somebody do that? Oh, okay, no. great. I, I just like to add that your session is wonderful. I mean, um, all active participants and um, I've learned perusal because of you, because of your session. Um, and, you know, I really love it. And also um, I've logged into the Flipgrid and um, watching you all introducing yourself in Japanese. <laughs> and I, the Japanese part, what, what, what does wa something this and, and it's really interesting, um, uh, what you have there and, um, thank you for having this session. I hope you, um, host it again next year. We'll see. <laughs> well, our second session, I, I try to contact the, um, Anna Puma. Uh, who led the wellness session, but apparently uh, she's not available. So I don't think that uh, we're going to have that. So if you want to add anything, uh, there's more time, I think. Well, maybe if there are questions, that would be good. Uh, we have only a um, uh, sentence or two in the chat because there aren't too many of us here. Uh, but there is only uh, from Jane, uh, she says that's a wonderful idea to have students' perceptions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd also like to add that one of the participants, uh, Teresa from the Czech Republic, is has was going to do uh, online uh, flip learning. She was going to do flip learning as her dissertation. Now she's going to do SOFLA as her dissertation. And so she and Jeff Skolnick, who is one of the guest speakers, you'll recall, the two of them have gotten together and they're writing a paper together. And I'll be doing a piece of the paper, the one that introduces the model, and then they'll be presenting their research and they're collaborating. None of that would have happened without EBO. Yeah, so, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> So that's another something else. No, it's a lot. It's a lot. I think Evo, you know, EVO, not Evo. Sorry, I said EVO is, no, I, I also say Evo. Um, as Christine said, I think that there's so many amazing aha moments and so many amazing things uh, in the sessions. It, it just goes on and on where, where you meet people and, and new people from all over. And what I found interesting with this uh, particular EVO session, that there were a lot of participants, not only from Japan, but also from China. So we're, you know, we're expanding. And, and I think that's uh, really important because we can learn so much more when we're connected uh, with I'm the world and not just problem. one area. Yeah. We know that uh, we're lacking uh, in terms of participants in Africa. Oh, we've but had Africa too, but not enough, I guess. 
Right. We just had a few, but that mm -hmm. is a content as Sanya's map showed very clearly in for the annual report, right, Sanya? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's uh, is missing. So it, it was very interesting to say that that we have to expand a little more to some of the countries that were not represented. Mm -hmm. And I have a student from Africa uh, in my MAT saw course on curriculum and syllabus design right now. He's from Ivory Coast mm -hmm. and uh, he works for the ministry. And he, he said to me this morning when I, when I told him about this, uh, he said he doesn't know exactly uh, where to, who to contact or where it would be, but because he has that contact in the ministry, we're going to get into Africa more mm. too. Well, we have North Africa, you know. We have North Tunisia, Africa. Tunisia, Morocco, um, Egypt. Yeah, uh, we also have uh, mm -hmm. South Africa, but in the middle, it's, yeah. it's pretty blank. So, um, and I checked in particular, uh, Senegal, we, I think we had some participants from there, but you know, all the surrounding countries and there are lots of them, uh, we still need to get. But we'll, we'll see. We had Vietnam in one, one year. Yeah, well, and we don't even have Germany. So I tried. Germany? Uh, I, yes. I looked for a TESOL affiliate uh, in Germany. It doesn't exist. I looked at other English teacher mm -hmm. organizations in Germany. They don't exist. So it's, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. You know, I have, we have people, Heike is German and we have other Germans in our sessions, but there is not one organization that we could contact, unfortunately. Yeah, Sweden too, you know, Sweden's also another country, Finland, yeah. Sweden. Yeah. Having I a Fika. <laughs> that we're missing uh, on our uh, annual report. So, uh, you know, we, as EVO coordinators, we should make an effort to find some of those organizations of English teachers in those countries, but in any case. Well, well there's the L, the, the, so I was gonna say. In your session, uh, Lane and Carolina, that's, uh, that was definitely um, a welcome addition and very much appreciated that uh, it goes, goes way out, you know, all over the world. Um, we're now getting a lot more from India. I think this is maybe mm -hmm. not the first time this that we year. had yeah. uh, India represented, but as uh, uh, moderators, definitely, and several sessions. So, Peter, keep up the good work, please. And <laughs> that's right. Spread the word in so Jamaica. Information, spread it out. Okay. Oh, but we had Costa Rica. I forgot about Costa Rica. Did you? Was that added? Nicole McVeigh. Uh, Sonia? Yeah, I'm you know Nicole, sure. right? I'll have to check. Yeah. I, have I just wanted to mention that the LT SIG of Aya Tefl is kind of a, a sister group to us in the sense that they're focused on a similar uh, area as, as we are. And there are a lot of people that are in both. You know, that's, that's, there's heav heavy participation in Europe there. So that's another connection. We could make that stronger, a stronger connection with the LT SIG. We used to have that, you know. <clears throat> yes, um, we did. Uh, we had a stronger connection with mm -hmm. them. Um, so yes, we don't anymore. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, Plus uh, the Vietnam people too. I wanted to say that sometimes we lose people. <laughs> we lost Vietnam. We had Vietnam about two years ago, um, and. From the, because the ministry sent them. The ministry has a lot to do with it. I think and we had Vietnam. I just checked Costa Rica. Oh, no, we uh, did. As missing. Uh, if you give me sharing privileges, I, I can show you. I have it right in front of me. Oh, you have, I think. Yep. Don't you have your co-host? I, I gave you. No, I went in as participant. On no, but I gave you co host. I made you co-host. Oh, did you? Yeah, of course. Um, let me check. Yep. That's right. Okay. I did well, that I first thing I usually do. I think I made just about everybody co-host. <laughs> yeah, mine says host disabled participant screen sharing. So. But your co-host, that's weird. And screen sharing. Okay, let me check. How could you be a co-host without screen sharing? That's Got interesting. Me. 
I'm just happy that uh, I'm in the session. <laughs> I also gave you, yeah, okay. And Carolina and Jane probably know, we were in the previous session hoping that we could just stay in and then the host disabled it and, and, and we had to leave. So. I'm just looking at the YouTube stream to see if anyone's posting questions there. No, no okay. Well, this wasn't really uh, publicized very much uh, since we had right. problems. And yeah, that is the other thing that we're going to have to work on um, in the call, I guess. Uh, but, you know, this is also the first time that it was um, uh, virtual. So in the past, it wasn't really that necessary. And for us, you know, for EVO, it has always been that way. So our... Um, outreach is much, much greater and always has been uh, simply by the need to reach out because that was the only way that we could get our audience. So we need to share that in the future. And I'm sure some of this will stick with the call IS too, um, that some sessions will continue to be online is my guess. But, you know, of course I could be wrong. Uh, we have a question in the yeah. uh, chat, and I can see that uh, Carolina has already seen it. It's about reviewing, uh, here it is, report. Uh, Carolina, would you like to, uh, to say something more about uh, the reviewing of, uh, of the lessons? Nagla's hey, question. Sonia. Yeah, I, I was just responding to Nagla. Uh, thanks mm -hmm. for the question. I guess we would have to ask um, permission for our participants to make them public, like to share them, because um, they were part of the session, right? So um, they had some stuff on Canvas, but then we asked them to put together a final version of their lesson and send it to us via Google Docs. So they made modifications and adjustments to that lesson they, they had been working on. So we have the final version on um, like a controlled environment let's say. So um, I guess we will have to ask for permission, but if that happens, I guess we can share them on the Facebook group, you know, if, if we get permission for, for using it openly. But, so I'll just copy the Facebook group address on the chat so that you can get it and you can just join it from there. But we should add that these are not exemplars. These are not lessons that we're saying necessarily follow SOFLA because these were learners of SOFLA. These are not accomplished master teachers of SOFLA. So as we said in our peer reviews, there are things they're still working on. So we wouldn't wanna be putting them out there as if these are SOFLA lessons. I'd be a little uncomfortable with that in addition to the privacy issue. So they're both issues. So Lane, uh, do you plan yes. to have open open, I don't know, some kind of an open environment where you would post some of these lessons or is that? Well, like I said, I'm not, I'm not comfortable posting something that isn't really a self -love. No, no, I'm talking lesson. about yours, oh. maybe yours. Oh, or mine? I don't know how yours. great mine are either. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, you mean it's, it's very customized? In other words, everybody uses yeah. it. Um, for well, their... remember, so, well, I shouldn't say remember, we didn't tell you what SOFLA was. This has all been dancing around it because we haven't mm -hmm. actually talked about it. But SOFLA is a template for a lesson. So it can be applied to any instructional context. We happen to be TESOL people. So we think about, that, about it that way. But Jeff, for example, in Australia, he's in the business. He teaches business management courses. He's mm -hmm. applying it. Silvana was in our session, I'm not sure why, <laughs> she, but she teaches chemistry. So it's for any subject, it's for any age group, um, it's for, you know, it's, a, it's just a template. You take the template and you use it for whatever you wanna use it for. So it's pedagogical principles that drive it. And each step has certain principles and the steps flow one to the other. And so, uh, you know, any lesson that we provide is just 
one interpretation of the steps. And the danger is that people think, oh, it has to be that kind of lesson, but it doesn't. You can teach anything with it. So we're, we're still working with what you put out there to tell people about it. And we're open to ideas. The best thing to start with is the article, the, the article in, in Tessel EJ uh, on the internet that Vance Stevens edits. Mm -hmm. That's the best place to start to learn about it, um, to, to understand the model. I, I just put it on the chat just in case. Yeah. And Vance, by the way, is stepping down or has stepped down as the editor of uh, the journal. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. So. Yeah, that position. He's a great uh, editor. He really put us through our paces with that article with, uh, yeah. that I did with Ilka. I'm happy with how it turned out, but boy. Yeah, yeah. I was asked. He's a good editor. <laughs> uh, I was asked to do it, but I, I'm, I'm not up to it right now. Yeah. Looks great. Thank you for sharing well, that. Yeah. Okay, so I guess um, if there aren't any other questions, we'll just um, say I thank you. To, I don't know if you saw the um, uh, annual report that I had up. Did you want to take a quick you, look at it? Or? You mean the, um, the map? The map, yes. The annual report with the map, yes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of small for my eyes, but. And this is just the countries that were represented and not represented this time. Uh, I noticed that Nicaragua was missing, but in the past, uh, Nicaragua has been represented and has some personal connections there. So I will get those working again. Okay, so you've got some work ahead of you. Well, hmm. all of us, Nelly. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're our team, remember? <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> All right, everybody. We had a wonderful day today on our first uh, Best of Evo. Yes, and uh, we're looking forward to two more days. Yes. Thank you very thank much you. for this and happy anniversary. And thank you for being part yes. of Evo. Thank you for making it such a success. All of you guys. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lane and Carolina. Enjoy today, Enjoy and you know what Nelly and I kept.